Great morning, Facebook. Happy, happy Sunday, guys. If y'all are on here, make sure you throw me some hearts and let me know that you guys can hear me. Let me double check this on my phone also. Let me know that you guys can hear me. Throw some comments below. Yes, y'all see I am by myself this morning. Um, but I'm trying something new as far as the, the advertisements. If you can see, I think it's on, is it this side of oh, my screen? It might be this side, I don't know. But um, yes, I changed the branding. So those of you who have watched before, I um, normally it was the duck there. So I paid my little $20 to get rid of the duck. Okay, I can hear you. Great morning, great morning. Throw some hearts and let me know you guys can hear me. Throw some hearts and show some love. Um, make sure you guys invite a friend. Make sure you guys comment below. If you guys have never seen my live broadcast since I've been doing this, i like for you to engage, ask questions, leave some feedback because I can feature your questions or your comments or your feedback on here. So that's extremely exciting. Um, if you saw the title of my message today, first off, how are y'all doing? How is everyone doing on this lovely Sunday morning? I'm blessed and highly favored. How about yourself? Um, like I said, be sure to comment below, engage. Don't come on here and, and not speak. I like to hear from everyone. So is it Brienne? I hope I'm pronouncing it right. It says very cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, what I will say is you saw the title of this message. Nothing is going as I planned, but God. So, um, can I just say, can I be honest and transparent in this season? Well, first off, can I be honest? This is kind of awkward for me to go live like this from my computer because I'm used to doing it from my phone or from my iPad. So it looks weird seeing you guys from the computer on here, at least when I'm not with the other ladies for tea talk This looks kind of weird, but we're going to make some shape. But as I mentioned, nothing is going as I planned, but God. In this current season that I'm in, and I just wanted to leave you all with this encouragement as well. Oftentimes, God gives us assignments and direction, you know, for what it is he's calling for us to do in life. And a lot of times your obedience, well, I'm not going to say a lot of times, your obedience is what unlocks your next level or unlocks your next assignment or unlocks, you know, your next set of instructions that you're supposed to be waiting on. Well, I say all of that to say in this particular season that I'm in right now as we speak, nothing is going as I planned. And God had to remind me this morning that it never was supposed to. You know, not saying that the overall reward or the overall prize or the overall celebration or the overall promise won't still come to pass, but it was never supposed to happen the way I wanted it to, the way I expected it to. And if I'm being honest, I did set some goals where I'm like, okay, this has to happen this way. And then the next step, it will happen this way. And then the next step, it will happen this way. God has taken everything out of order for what I thought it was supposed to be. Um, and it's easy to be obedient when you know the plan. But how many of us, I think I got this with my um, question. Um, how many of us can be obedient when you don't know the plan? I think that is the hardest thing to do. I know I'm not the only one. So I see y'all are on here watching with me. Like, don't be scared. Leave some comments. That is one of the hardest things to do. It's easy to be obedient when you know what, when it's light, you're walking in the light. But it, is it easy for you to be obedient when you're walking in the dark? And right now I'm in a season where I don't know the plan, but I still need to be obedient with what God is calling me to do. And sometimes what God laid on my spirit earlier today was sometimes your obedience, those who are in your circle or your friends or whomever, um, sometimes your obedience requires for them to be in the dark also. Is your circle okay with not knowing what God is doing in your life? And I've been going through that particular season. I've been tested with that and not in a bad way. But God has been revealing and showing me different things like, will your squad, will your circle, will your group of friends, will your family, will those that you're around all the time, will they be okay with not knowing what God is doing in your life? And more than once, I've been put in a situation, it's like, well, why don't we know? Why, why don't we have access? And a lot of times, you've heard the saying, everyone can't go with you, but there's also a saying, everyone can't know what God is doing. Everyone isn't supposed to know. Sometimes you don't even know what God is doing. 
If, if your friends and your squad and your circle and yourself all knew what God was doing, when he was doing it, why he was doing it, how it was going to take place, how can God be God if we know everything there is to know? And that's something to think about. You know, I've been put in that situation where those who I'm surrounded by, they too wanted to know what God was doing or why is it happening this way or why don't we know or why are you leaving us in the dark? Oftentimes where God is taking you or the instructions that he's calling for you to do require for others to be in the dark, require for others to not know what God is doing in your life. And that is totally okay. There's a season for revealing what God is doing and there's a season to be quiet. I went through several seasons back and forth. My first, the first part of my season was being in the dark. God hid me to prepare me and to equip me. I've shared that with you guys several times. I didn't understand what was going on, but as I walked closely with God or walked closer with God and drew his presence and seeked his face more and more, I started getting more instructions based on my faith and based on my obedience. So then I went through a season where, okay, I've equipped you, I've prepped you, now it's time to release you to the world for what I've done. That's when I told you guys, you know, God had pulled me back to write a book. I just came out of a season where I had to be still all over again. It's buffering, sis. Sis, that might just be your connection. If it is, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I had to be still to seek um, my next set of instructions. So I'm, I'm just coming out of that season where God calls, called for me to be still. And being still meant I could not move until God said, okay, this is your next set of instructions. Many of us, when we're in that season of stillness, we like to go around God and go ahead of God and do things within our own power and our own will. I was currently there. As much as I wanted to broadcast certain things, God was like, no, I need you to be still before you get your next set of instructions. So coming out of that, I've got my next set of instructions to broadcast to you all now. And this is what leads me to the title of this message. Nothing went what I planned. And God knows that, like, and he told me it was never supposed to go as I planned. So here's the thing. Many of you, and I thank you, thank you, thank you for those of you who already pre-ordered the book. <sighs> I finally got a date. I will have your uh, books in hand Thursday. I got my date. I got delivery notice. I will have them in hand Thursday. So I'm excited because I finally have a date for you all. I will be signing them, putting special thank yous in them. I will be praying over them and sending them out to you all by Friday. So Thursday, I will have all of the pre-orders. And by Friday, all of the pre-orders will go out. Here's where God threw a, a loop in my plan. The pre-orders were supposed to be the first of anything. But God um, gave me confirmation because this has already started happening. I couldn't understand. I was like, oh my gosh, the enemy's busy. Everything is not happening the way it's supposed to. And God was like, no, this was a part of my plan also. So this is also an announcement. As of today, the book is available on Amazon. So I am so grateful. Yes, you guys are hearing it. You're publicly hearing it now. It is available to purchase on Amazon. For those of you who are prime, you know, you will get it really, really quick. And it is also available for purchase on Amazon Kindle. I'm just still in awe that I have a book available on Amazon and for Kindle. So for those of you who pre-order, I'm here to publicly tell you it was not my plan for Amazon to be announced first. Your pre-orders were supposed to be in your hands first. But God said it was never supposed to go the way I wanted it to go. Why is he having my pre-orders wait until... After this Amazon announcement, I don't know, but I do know he's going to get the glory for all of this. So for those of you who um, do wish to purchase on Amazon, it is available for purchase now on Amazon. For those of you who are Kindle lovers, it is available for you to download now as we speak on Kindle. Thank you, Misha, so much. But for those of you who did pre-order, your copies will be in my hand Thursday. Not only will I be signing them, but I feel led to pray over them as well. Insert a special thank you with those. And those will be going out by next Friday morning. That was not my plan. My plan was not to announce Amazon until after my pre-orders had gone out. But again, 
This was not my plan. Everything that I thought was supposed to be strategic in order for whatever reason, I have to be obedient. And I'm before you guys say, why are those on Amazon going to get there sooner? Or those who are downloading Kindle going to get those sooner? I have to be obedient, period. I wasn't going to make the announcement, but God gave me confirmation. He spoke to me this morning, gave me confirmation um, to let you all know that it is available on Amazon as we speak to purchase and for Kindle as well. But those of you who pre-ordered, again, that part, I don't even want to say it's out of my control. It's just the way God intended for it to go. Why? I don't know. But your pre-orders, again, as I, I said, the first 100 pre-orders, you know, you guys were getting, you're going to get a signed copy. They're going to be prayed over um, before they go to you, and it will be a special thank you. So if you choose to get it from Amazon, great. If you want to have a signed copy um, from me, I, I am ordering more. So if you want your order to go out Friday with this order that's going out, message me because I did have to order more to read up on that. Thank you, Tamika. I did have to order more to read up on that. So if you want a signed copy, you will not be getting a signed copy from Amazon. Um, but if you just have to have the book now, it is available on Amazon. And if you are a Kindle lover, it is available there. But if you purchase from me, when I order and get my book, can I bring it to you to sign? We're going to have to talk about that off camera, Misha. <laughs> Stay in alignment, sis. Um, if you purchase from me, you will be getting a signed copy. And those that pre-order, I am going to take the time to, um, like I said, I just felt led by the spirit to pray over those who pre-order. So um, again, I don't know what God is doing. I'm excited. It is not, not going as I planned, but God told me it was never supposed to go as planned. Not only am I being left in the dark with this, those in my life, those in my circle, you know, they're being left in the dark as well. It is what it is. And as I stated earlier, when I opened this live up, you have to be mindful of those who can respect when they're in the dark about what God is doing in your life. Everyone can't go with you and everyone can't know what God is doing. And that's where oftentimes we step out of alignment with God. We feel like we got to tell everybody. I've been put in situations where everyone's asking me, well, why can't we know this? Why can't we know that? Why don't we have access with this? Why don't we have access with that? I got to be obedient. And if your circle or your friends or those you're surrounded by can't respect, you know, you your obedience, then sometimes you need to check who you're surrounding yourself with. And it was oftentimes, you know, as bad as I wanted to announce something, I had to be obedient for what God was calling me to do. Obedience is key. You know, sometimes God hides you for a reason. God puts you in the dark for a reason. God tells you to be quiet for a reason. God tells you to stay still for a reason. Your obedience will make or break before he unlocks the next level. I'm telling you guys again, this is not how I planned it, but I can't hold back what God is doing. Like when God says yes, no one can say no. I have to be obedient with the way he's doing this. I did not want Amazon to be released first, but it is for whatever reason. And God, I will still continue to give God the praises off my lips. God gets all the glory um, from this. It is him and only him. Um, so I am excited, again, just to say, um, period, get your books on Amazon. You guys see the, the brands and logos that I have on here. That's so exciting. Get your books from Amazon. You can download or purchase from Amazon now, and you can download um, from Amazon Kindle as well. But the pre-orders, I have confirmation. I will have them on my Thursday. I will sign them, seal them with a prayer and with love and send them on out to you guys by Friday. Tamika said, yes, me should bring your book to her book signing. Okay, she already spoke that into existence. Come into a city near you. Hey, Takesha, I see you, sis. Hello, 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 Misha. Hunty, you just said a word. I really felt that this week, still learning to sit and listen and not to move because I want to listen. If that isn't a word within itself, you guys know I've shared with you time after time, Everything that God gives me to speak to you is something that I've been through or something that I'm going through or something that I've, I've currently just walked out of. So I'm not speaking from anything that I haven't experienced myself. And I knew it was God testing me because, again, those in my circle, 
why we can't know this, sis? Why don't we have access to this? Why are we in the dark? Why you can't tell us what's going on? I had to be obedient to God and then for him to reveal that too was a test. You weren't supposed to tell them and you gotta be, your friends, your circle gotta be okay with what I'm doing, even if it means they're being left in the dark. Everybody cannot go with you and you gotta be okay with that. And everybody cannot know what God is doing at a particular time and you gotta be okay with that. Sometimes you don't even know what God is doing and you gotta be okay with that. Again, like I said before, it's easy to be obedient when you know the plan, but can you be obedient when you're left in the dark? That is hard to do. It's hard to be obedient when you're in the dark. Everybody wants to know what's going on. Why is it happening this way? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't this? If God led you guys to hush, please hush, because the Holy Spirit will shut you up. And not only that, when you start moving out of alignment with God, you have no peace. You have no rest. You have things won't go as they were supposed to go because you went ahead of God. You did things your way. If things were done my way, y'all wouldn't be getting this announcement right now because this is not what I planned. But I can't question God's plan. God knows that I've told him, I don't understand this. I don't understand why you're doing it like this. And he keeps telling me it, it wasn't for you to understand. It was never your plan. It's still the ending result, but this is for my glory. Why is he taking this? What I felt is out of sequence. I don't know. I just got to be obedient and do it. Either way, God gets all the glory for this, all the glory. I don't understand the way he still gets the glory. So again, I am excited to announce the book is available on Amazon. I think I put a banner for that as well. Did I? Uh, well, maybe I did. Yes, it was always God's plan. Tish, I miss you, sissy. Oh my gosh, I wish you was here. I miss you so much. But yes, God's plan, God's plan is not supposed to be our plan. And he keeps reminding me that it was never about me. It was what he could get through me. And I just swore the steps that I had this in, it was supposed to go that way. But God said it was, here's the thing. If everything goes the way that we intended it to go, when do we give God room to be God? When do we give God room to surprise us? When do we give God room to exceed our expectations? When do we give God room to move and just do what he does best and be God? I just knew the plan was supposed to work that way and not saying that his, his plan is the ultimate plan. If you guys saw my post prior to this, um, the announcement post that I made, it says 2020 visions and celebrations. 2020 it's perfect vision, right? I spoke this I spoke this with some of my team members yesterday. 2020 is perfect vision, right? I've told you guys before what God what God called for me to do this year was not on my 2020 vision board. But it was never about my vision. It was about God's vision. God has the perfect vision. So 2020 is visions and celebrations this year. God's perfect vision. Whatever it is that God is calling you guys to do, be obedient, be in alignment with what he's calling you to do because I promise his plan surpasses your plan and your understanding. His ways of thinking surpasses the way we can even process. So that just makes me even more excited to know that the way I thought this was supposed to go, it is not going that way. But that leaves me, it leaves it more, it leaves more room for surprise. It leaves it for God to be able to just come in and rock my world and blow my mind. So I'm excited. I'm just, I'm on the edge of my seat, literally waiting to see what God is going to do. Yes, yes, we have to be still and know that he is God. Being still is a hard thing to do. People say it and they're just like, I'll be still and wait on God. But are you waiting for your next assignment? And what if your waiting means that you're in the dark? Sometimes you're waiting and being in the dark is just being still. He doesn't speak. You don't feel his presence. He doesn't answer anything that you've asked him. But you got to know that God does some of his best work in the dark. And that is the hardest time of having faith. <laughs> that is the, um, you got to have that faith because again, you're, you're in the dark and you're like, okay, God, I know what you called me to do. I know what you told me to do, but I haven't heard from you. I don't, I don't know what my next set of instructions are. I don't know what my directions are. I don't know where I'm supposed to be going right now. 
but you got to be still to hear his voice. God's voice is not loud. It never is. It's a still, small voice. And sometimes even when you're still, you still don't hear from him. That's a word right there. But that's where your obedience kicks in. Will you stay still even when you can't hear from me? Will you stay still when you're speaking to me and you don't hear me speak back? Will you stay in alignment and stay where I've told you to stay even when everything is going on around you and you feel like you've missed your mark? That's where obedience comes in. You got to stay still. There were times I'm like, okay, God, the ref like said, ready, set, go. And I'm ready to run. But God's like, I didn't tell you to run. I didn't tell you to go yet. You got to know when God says move. You got to know when God says go. You got to know when God says stop. You got to know when God says turn right, turn left. I don't want to be here and God is over here. I don't want to be here and God is up there. You got to be in alignment with God and in alignment with what he's calling you to do. Even when we can't see it, he's working. Even when I can't feel it, he's working. He never stops. He never stops working. That is absolutely true. Absolutely true. You are not going to always have goosebumps from God. You are not always going to have chills. And he often had to remind me of that because times I didn't see him, times I didn't feel him, times I couldn't hear from him. I thought I was doing something wrong. I'm like, whoa, let me backtrack. Did I do something wrong? Am I out of alignment? Because I don't hear you. I hear from you every day. And the last two days, I haven't heard from you. But that's the time he's putting together things for your big reveal, for the big surprise party. If we knew everything that God was doing, again, how is it going to be a surprise? How can he exceed our expectations? So not only did I have to be still, but I had to be obedient even when those around me Wondered why they were being left in the dark with what God was calling for me to do. Even when they wanted to know why you can't tell us this. We we have VIP access. Why don't we know what God is doing? You're not supposed to know. Nobody's supposed to know. And I have to be obedient to that. Even if it feels like your circle is getting smaller. People are falling off your friends list. People are, are kicking you to the curb and walking out of your life. Let them go. If God intended for them to be in your life, they will stay in your life. But a lot of times God will take you through things and seasons for those who are not meant to stay for where he's calling you to go or for those who are not meant to know for what he's calling you to do. Stop telling everybody what God shares with you. God will let you know when it's meant to be revealed and when it's supposed to be between you and him. At the end of the day, whether it's silent or whether it's broadcasting what he's done, God will still get all the glory. It's not supposed to go the way we planned it. It never was supposed to. Never was. It's for God's glory, not mine. So it's not meant for me to know why I have to make this announcement now. You know, again, that Amazon is announced first um, or Amazon is available now. But I just know God is in control. So I'll leave you with this. If you feel like there is a donkey in your road, and there will be often times when you feel like things are supposed to go a certain way, but a hiccup comes or that monkey wrench comes or he puts that donkey in your road to block you, embrace that donkey also. There are times I'm like, God, not only have you thrown one donkey in my road, you put a whole herd of donkeys around me right now. I don't know why, but I say thank you because you're holding me back from something. You're protecting me from something. You're orchestrating something ahead of me. You've seen something around me that I can't see. Thank God for your donkeys in a row. This felt like a donkey to me, and it still does. But I trust God for whatever is the reason he allowed this to happen the way he did. For why this was supposed to be the last announcement, and now this is the first announcement. And what I thought was going to be first is going to happen last. I have no idea why, but God is in control at the end of the day. Stop letting your right hand know what your left hand is doing. So true. Tish, listen, listen. People wanted to know what God was doing, why he was doing it, how he was doing it. Why didn't they know what he was doing? You got to be obedient. Obedient is key in this season. When God is using you, he's testing you as well. God does not trust everyone equally. I've shared that before. And in order for him to use you, for what he's promised for you, you got to pass the test and he will test you over and over and over again. There will be times you felt like you passed that test and he brought it up again just 
with a different person or in another version or happened a different way, but it was still kind of the same thing. For one, either you didn't pass it right the first time and that's why you keep getting it, or two, he's going to continue to test you. He's going to test your obedience. He's going to test your faith. He's going to test and make sure that the way he molded you and the way he equipped you and the way he prepared you, that he can get the glory for that. And even those that are around you, those that you trust and those that you love and those that you encounter 24 seven, God will also test you through your circle as well. And he's, he's done that with me. There were times I was asked, I was taunted. Yes, if y'all are watching, it felt like I was being taunted. You know who you are. But I had to be obedient. I had to keep my mouth shut when God told me not to speak. I had to keep certain things between me and God when he told me not to reveal it. There's more to this story, but I can't share that with you now. I know there will be a time when I'm supposed to share this. So just remember, as I'm telling you guys, even this now, that when I reveal more to this story, you're like, I remember she said it was more. I can't speak on it right now. As bad as I want to share it, you know, because I, I know how things are happening, I can't. I can't speak on it now. God hasn't given me the go ahead to open my mouth about it. And that's when you guys, I just, I want to encourage you to be obedient to God, regardless of who you feel like you're going to let down or who you feel like is not going to understand. God will also be in the midst of those tests as well. Are you willing to let go of what he's telling you to let go of? Are you willing to walk away from those he re he's requiring you to walk away from? Are you willing to be okay if those who you thought were part of your circle or your squad seem to dwindle off and you knew that was like your ride or die, you knew that was that was your, your click right there? You got to be obedient because a lot of times it's not that he's calling them to go away. It's not that he's taking them away from you or you away from them. A lot of times he's testing you. He's, te he's testing your faith. He's testing your obedience. He's going to keep testing you. When you feel like you've been tested by God and you've passed the test, don't celebrate too long because I guarantee you another test is coming. You want to be one of the ones that God can trust. Since the world closed, I've, I've, I've learned a lot about myself and people that were around me wondering why I was going backwards because I wasn't listening to God to remove them out of my life. God will rock your world. God will shake everything. And what's not meant to be there will fall off. And what's meant to remain will stay. God will shake you. God will rock your world. We give the enemy too much credit, you know, thinking, oh, the enemy attacked, the enemy did this, the enemy did that. Y'all got to remember, God is still in the midst of the attacks also. Even when it doesn't feel good, God is in that too. And if he's calling for us to do something or calling, it's okay, Misha, if he's calling for us to do something or, again, we're acting out too fast, God is going to let you know if you went ahead of him. And when you go ahead of him, you have no peace. You have no rest with what it is that you're trying to do because you're doing it your way. You're doing it for your will. You're doing it for your planning, your glory. And God is like, no, it was never supposed to be like that. So you've got to be obedient. If God is pulling people out of your life, you got to trust that too. If God is bringing unfamiliar faces into your life. You got to trust that too. God is in the midst of it all, but don't get tricked out of your blessing because you were too impatient on waiting for God's next, next set of instructions. God never gives you all the instructions right away. You get them in bits and pieces. And the only way they're revealed to you is by your obedience of showing up. He's not going to tell you the entire plan. You get bits and pieces. You have to show up in order to find out where you go next. Hey, sissy, I miss you, Raven. <laughs> Tish said, God tested Job. I had to keep reminding myself that God tests everybody in the Bible. And why are we exempt from that? Even Jesus was tempted. Y'all, do you remember right before when Jesus, uh, he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit? So we would look at it like, well, why would the spirit lead him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil himself? God was in that too. Read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. We are not exempt from any of that. And thank you, Jesus. He just dropped it on my spirit, Tish, as you um, shared that. Jesus himself was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. You think you exempt from temptation? But... 
God will give you enough grace to where temptation can't overcome you, that your grace will allow you to overcome that temptation. It's all about obedience. I'm sitting in my bed crying. You are truly speaking to my spirit. Well, I asked God to use me, sis, Misha, before I got on here. Anytime I get on here and speak with you guys, I used to speak from notes, but lately God has been testing me to speak as he's given it to me. So I have nothing that I'm going by. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to lead me. You guys hear my voice when it's God's words that are coming out of my mouth. I always ask him, God, empty me, decrease me, and increase on the inside of me. I never want to speak from a place that I fluffed up God's words or I took something out when he told me to put something in. I have to be obedient. I have to be in alignment. I had to learn that I got to speak and tell people things that sometimes they didn't want to hear. And sometimes God will also put you in that situation. Will you do something when it doesn't feel good? Will you tell someone something when you don't want to be the one to tell them? Even when you feel like they're going to take it the wrong way, your obedience is being tested. God will often sometimes give you a message to give to someone else and you know they're not going to receive it well. But you're maybe very well so your obedience is being tested. Y'all got to be in alignment with God this season. If, if I can't leave you with anything else, be in alignment with God so you can be obedient, so you can be faithful, so you can serve and just have the wisdom. Pray for wisdom because if you have wisdom, you can accomplish anything. With wisdom, you'll be able to discern. You'll be able to dissect his words. You'll be able to unfold his words. You'll be able to unmask his words. And when you can dissect it and unfold it and unmask it, the Holy Spirit will allow you to interpret it through God's interpretation. You see things through God's lens and no longer your natural eye. Stay in alignment with God. Stay obedient with God and wait for God to give you instructions. That's where many of us fail. It's easy to get our instructions when we can keep hearing from God and we know the plan. But we also all must experience a season of waiting and a season of being tempted. We are never meant to pass that temptation with our own power. That's where the power of the Holy Spirit has to give us the grace to surpass that temptation, being a true servant for the Lord since day one of me. I appreciate you, sis. I was speaking to one of my business partners about this the other day. When you say yes to God, you would think life is easier. It's actually easier living for your own will than it is following Christ. And many people won't tell you that. Many people make you think that when you say yes to God and you follow Christ, like you're exempt from everything. You're exempt from pain. You're exempt from trials. You're exempt from storms. Like life is just great. If I had to be honest and transparent and share something with you that many pastors themselves won't share, it is harder to walk with God than it is to live for your own free will. There, I said it. And it's absolutely true. It's supposed to be true. It was never supposed to be easy because we got to suffer with Christ before we can reign with Christ. You're not exempt from suffering. Jesus wasn't exempt from suffering. You too must drink from the cup of suffering. But God also said, those who suffer for me and because of me, I will come back and restore. I will come back and heal those wounds and those wounds of infliction that you got because of me. Because you did that with me, I'm going to come back and not only heal them, I'm going to restore them. And when God restores, he doesn't just give it back what it was. He multiplies. So, yes, I've suffered with God. Yes, I've been cut. I've been bruised. I've been burned. I've got the internal scars to prove it. But I had to suffer with him before I could reign with him. Before I was given the crown, I had to pay the price. And trust me, it was a price. I had to lose a lot. I had to walk away from a lot. I had to let go of a lot. And I talk about all of this in my book. So make sure you guys get the book for those of you who may be, you know, going through that season in life or not knowing what is going on. God knows what he's doing. You just got to trust him. It is so hard at times. It was never supposed to be easy, but it's not easy within your own power. You got to trust God and allow him to give you the power of the Holy Spirit to have that grace to surpass the temptation and surpass the testings and surpass the trials and surpass the afflictions. I'm being afflicted left and right. I'm being persecuted. Like you're not exempt from that. And if you thought you were, I'm sorry you've been misinformed. Trust God. And just watch how he comes in on your behalf. 
Trust God and just be obedient. Be obedient even when it doesn't feel good. Just continue to stay in alignment with God. If you're in alignment with him, you won't miss him. Because when God passes by, he passes by. Don't miss your blessing. Don't get tricked out of your blessing because you weren't where you were supposed to be. Don't move ahead of God. Don't move when he says be still. And don't be still when he says move. We all have those seasons. Some of you are in the season of hearing his word and you're supposed to move and go. Some of you are in the season of being still. You haven't heard from him. Don't go around him because you haven't heard from him and you're going to check up on things. No, I can't remember the person in the Bible, but he was supposed to wait for his prophet to come back before giving a sacrifice. I want to say it was Saul who was supposed to wait for. Was it Solomon to come back? Holy Spirit, help me. One of the men in the Bible, I want to say it was Saul, and I apologize if I'm wrong, but he was supposed to wait before he did the sacrifice and before they went out. His thing was he wanted to move because it seemed like his servants and those in his army were complaining because it wasn't happening fast enough. Although he had instructions on what to do, he went to please over here versus being obedient to God. And literally after he offered the sacrifice, his prophet came and was like, you fool, you weren't supposed to do that. You get, had instructions to wait. And he said, I tried to wait, but my men were ready to go fight in war. Don't miss your mark because you're trying to please the world instead of thank you, Jesus. You're too busy trying to please the world instead of being obedient to what God has told you to do. If God says wait and the world is going out having a great time here and you think you need to be a flesh over here, this king missed his favor. God took his hand off of him. He took his anointing off of him because he wasn't in, a, in alignment. He stepped out of alignment to please the world, to please his men, rather than waiting for the instructions that God clearly gave him. I've tried to do things on my own. I don't want to be out of alignment. I don't. And I encourage you guys to be still and wait for God. Whatever he's requiring for you to do, just wait for him. If you do nothing else, wait. If he says move, move. If he says be still, be still. You won't go wrong when you're following God. Y'all have an amazing Sunday. I can't believe I've been on here with y'all for 40 minutes, but thank you for those of you who did stay on here with me. Again, grab your books from Amazon. Download your books from Kindle and your pre-orders. Those who pre-ordered a few weeks ago, I will have your books in my hand Thursday. I will be signing them. I will be sealing them with love. I will be praying over them and I will send them out to you guys by Friday. You're welcome, sis. I hope this spoke to your spirit as well. You guys, make sure if you're catching a replay on here, hashtag replay. Um, and also just share this live. Somebody needed it. Even if it wasn't for you, I guarantee you somebody on your friends list needed to hear this. Tag a, tag a friend if you need to. Someone who may need some words of encouragement, who may be experiencing this in the current season of your life, of their life. But you guys be blessed. Thank you again for hanging out with me for 40 whole minutes on this Sunday afternoon. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye.